open to receive and my ears open to hear what the Spirit says. Amen? So y'all ready for the word? Let me hear it. What you ready for? Amen, amen. So I'm going to call Mistress Siggins up so she can introduce our speaker for the day. Amen? Amen. I want to honor her with that.
spirit move. Let your glory be revealed. Let your light shine. That we remove the power of darkness. Let your glory be revealed. In the name of Jesus. Speak to our hearts, O oh God. Speak to our hearts. We pray for a visitation on this morning. We need your presence. We need you, O oh God. We call on your name. But there's power in your name. There's healing in your name. There's deliverance in your name. We bless you, oh God. We bless your name. And we worship you in spirit and truth. We worship you in the majesty of your power. We worship you, oh God, and we give you glory. But there is none like you in all of the earth. None like you, oh God. We can search throughout eternity. We won't find no one like you. So we bless you and we invite you. We invoke your presence in this place on this morning. In the name of Jesus, rest upon us. Oh, let the weight of your spirit rest upon us this morning. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, oh God. And move by your spirit. And we thank you. We know, oh God, that you are our God, and that you will start with us, you walk with us, you be with us, and you are here, but you are still Emmanuel, which is interpreted God with us. And if God be for us, he's more than this whole world against us. And if God be with us, whom shall we fear? Oh, thank you, Lord. Bless your name. Bless your name.
for one another. I've been in the mode of praying. I've been praying. Amen. And the Lord has been leading me to pray for different things. And uh, so many things that's going on in our country. And so many things that's going on around the world. And amen. Over in Palestine and amen. And other uh, Ukrainian and, and the whole world. There's so many things going on. And I'm so back and I'm looking and I'm watching. And uh, it takes me to Matthew, the 24th chapter, where the Bible talks about the last days how there's going to be some pestilence, amen, in the land and wars and rumors of wars, amen, and all over the world and earthquakes. The Bible make mention of this. This is the last thing uh, that's going to happen before uh, the second coming of Jesus Christ is that the word of God is going to be preached, amen, in every region of the world, amen, and I'm seeing the, the Bible begin to unfold uh, right in the, the midst of my eyes. And y'all, we're living in an end time day. with me. It says, and, and straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now, now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, and the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Jesus said, 
said, come on. And when Peter was coming down out of the ship, he walked on the water to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Oh, my God, save me, Lord. Verse 31 said, immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, called him, said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? little faith. Where is it that you have lost your faith and, and you doubt me? I think you can walk with me. Saw me open blinded eyes and we just fed a multitude of people just a little while before we got on the ship. Where is it when you lost your faith? Where is it when your, your faith got disturbed or moved or, or altered? What happened here with little faith? Go back to verse number 29. It says, and uh, he said, he asked in verse 28, Peter asked him, can he come on the water? He said, yeah. you. Uh, he said, can I come on the water? Verse number 29, Jesus said, come. He said, come on out. Come on out, Peter. Water a little deep, a little cold, but he said, come, come on out. Uh, and the Bible says that, and when Peter was come down, he got out the boat, you all. And he came out on the came out the ship and he walked, the Bible said he walked, he walked on the water to Jesus. He was walking on the water to Jesus. And he said but when he, but, but when he saw, here's the disturbance, here's the distraction, he, uh, when he saw the wind boisterous, these strong winds blowing, uh, the Bible said he was afraid, he let fear set in his heart and, and he began to sing and he cried saying, Lord save me. I want to use for subject matter this morning. Keep walking in faith. Keep walking in faith. If Peter would have not would not have gotten afraid, he would have walked to Jesus and they'd have walked back together to the boat. Amen. But he 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 lost his faith somewhere. His faith was disturbed. It was distracted. And sometimes we walk with God and we get distracted by things. But the fact of the matter is that we must learn to embrace God, hold on to God, and know that we must continue to walk with God in, in our faith. Now, amen, the Bible said that we walk by faith, according to 2 Corinthians 7. It says we walk by faith and not by sight. But this morning, God told me to tell you to walk in faith. Walk in faith. Keep walking in faith. Father, bless this word that's been great in this atmosphere this morning. I pray, Father, as I sow this word that it would fall on good ground. I pray against the stony ground and the wayside ground. I pray, Father God, this morning that the faith of the people will be stimulated. I pray, Father God, that you would move in the curiosities of our minds on today. Lord God, that you will grow us in faith, oh God. I pray this morning that faith is released in this atmosphere. Lord, that we will, be, that we will never be the same from this day forth regarding our faith. So, Father, I pray today that you would let, that you would let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, Lord, let it all be acceptable in your sight. I pray, oh God, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. You can be seated, amen, in the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. Keep walking. Keep walking. Amen. Keep walking in faith. Let the winds blow, but keep walking. Let the debris of life, my God, be around you and go past you and, and bring a sense of fear to you. Amen. But, but keep, keep walking. Let, let the, uh, the people of the day that, that have been sent in your life to get you off track, uh, uh, keep, just ignore them and, and keep walking. Amen. Even when you're dealing with some financial Natural instabilities of life, my God, and you uh, dealing with some sickness in your in, in your body, Amen. To God, or something that you don't have control of uh, uh, to change. Keep walking in faith. In other words, keep believing God. Uh, 
keep believing God. Because your, your, your future, amen, is not going to look like your present. Yeah. Because your present will never look like your yesterday. Yeah. Amen. Because God has something for you uh, tomorrow. He has something prepared for you uh, on tomorrow. Yeah. Amen. amen. So it doesn't matter, amen, uh, what you experience in life. You got to keep walking in faith. Amen. You have to keep walking in faith. Amen. amen. You may, amen, uh, deal with some things that you don't understand, but amen, and even sometimes we have questions for God. And how many of y'all have been God before? Uh, we some of us are so sanctimonious. We too saved and sanctified. And, amen. So Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. Where, amen, we ain't never asked God nothing. Amen. Regarding our situation. Sometimes, amen, you need to bend the rules of things and you need to, amen, go into relationship with them and begin to, amen, petition God and, and make, make your request known unto him, amen, things that you don't understand. I'm not going through life confused. Amen. And God has the answers to everything. People coming up missing and stuff, God know where they at. Amen. That person that stole your car, God know who they are. Amen. That person, my God, that you've been dealing with that you can't go, uh, come to terms of, of who they are, God know who they are. He knows their intent. He, he know, my God, that you know. He know everything. Amen. So sometimes you need to question God to get some understanding from him. Say you don't suppose to question God. We ask him for stuff, don't we? Amen. We're supposed to question God regarding things that, amen, to God, if you don't understand, amen, the Bible says that the wisdom is the, the, the principal thing, but in all you're getting, the church just confused because we scared of God. We scared to go really talk to God. But we'll tell each other off. Amen. We'll look up and down at each other and God, God our nose that folk. Yeah, but we won't go talk to God. Amen. We won't, amen, ask him something that we don't understand. His ears inclined to your voice. Yeah, he want to hear you. Yeah. And that's why we have a voice box. That's why we don't just talk with our hands. And with yeah. that, we, amen, God want to hear what you're saying. Yeah. So no matter what you're going through, you got to walk. You got to keep walking in faith. You got to keep yeah. walking in faith. Now, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, let me just uh, visit this one passage here in Hebrews 11. I'm not going to turn to it, uh, but verse number one, it says that now faith is the substance, amen, of things hoped for and, and the evidence of things not seen. Right. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And then in verse number six, the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. But he that goes to God must go to him and know that he is a rewarder to them that diligently or persistently seek him. Give up too quick. We prayed about it, nothing happened. So I, you know, it's, you know, maybe that's not for me. Sometimes you gotta be a little persistent. You're dealing with God. So uh, uh, we gotta understand that a lot of us will. Maybe God did not. Amen. Maybe I don't have no faith. Maybe I'm in a place where uh, God gave them faith, but, but he didn't give me no faith. Or uh, God gave them faith, and amen, I don't have no faith. There's nothing farther from the truth because you was born, amen, with a mechanism inside of you called faith. God put that inside of you when you were birthed. When you came into the earth, you had faith. Well, well what are you talking about? I'm glad y'all asked me this morning. What I'm talking about right there. Uh, the Bible says in Romans, the 12th chapter, it says, I beseech you, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy unto God, which is your reasonable service. It says, Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that which is a good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. Y'all need to reach our Bible sometime. And then in Verse number three, the Bible says, For I say unto, uh, for I say the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but he said, but uh, but to think soberly according to God, which have, 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 have given to us, each and every one of us, here it is, a, a measure of faith. All of us have a little bit of faith inside of us. And then Jesus picked it up. He said, y'all uh, looking for people with big faith and stuff? And Jesus said, wait a minute, let me just, uh, let, let me break tradition. And he said that all you need is faith of a size of a mustard seed. Amen. So you don't have to go and move the mountain.
mountain. You just speak to the mountain. And all you need is a little bit of faith to believe that you can do that. Because God has death to each and every one of us. God has a lot to us, a small measure of faith. And when we've got a little bit of faith, we really, we will experience some large results. Somebody say, keep walking in faith. Keep walking in faith. Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. Amen. In faith. David picked it up in the book of Psalms 23, verse number 4. David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Some of y'all need to slow down. Y'all moving too fast. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. See, when you run, my God, sometimes you miss some things. But, but when you begin to walk, hey amen, you have a visual of a thing uh, of your surroundings. You, yeah. you see stuff that's uh, uh, around you. When you when you walk, my God, you can see things that you don't see when you're moving too rapid, when you're moving too fast. So David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he said, I'm walking through the valley. See, sometimes, uh, many of us think we ought to always be up on the mountain. Amen, where, 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 amen, where, uh, where it's good, amen, but we don't want to go through, my God, the gutter, we don't want to go, my God, through the valley, we don't want to go through the brush of life, we don't want to go, my God, through the trouble of life, amen, we, we don't want, we want to deal with the valley. David says, Lord, walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he said, I don't fear no evil, but you know that God is with him, he said, God is with him. And then in Proverbs, amen, 13 and 20, uh, the Bible says that uh, he that walk with the wise. Mm -hmm. Those who walk with wise people shall be wise. I wonder why so many fools around. People doing foolish things. You have to uh, come to a place where you uh, create an environment that's conducive, amen, to what you're looking for and what you want in life. Amen. So therefore, I'm looking for some wise people, Sister Beth, uh, to walk with. I can't walk with fools because if I walk with a fool, amen to God, I'm going to become foolish. Uh, so therefore, the Bible says that they that walk with the wise, amen, shall be wise. Amen. Amen. The Bible talks about it in Amos 3 and 3. It says, except, amen to God, two walk together, they can't even agree. Can't find nobody to walk with and be in agreement with. You're going to always be in cahoots with everybody. Amen. You're always going to be judgmental. You're going to always, amen, come to a place where it's all about you and no one else, amen. So you got to find somebody to be in agreement with, amen, to establish uh, uh, some type of covenant with uh, where you, amen, come, can come into agreement. Right. Amen. Except two come together. Uh, they, they, they can't even walk. They, they, they can't walk together. They can't even walk. And two walk together except they agree. And then the Bible, amen, I'm, I'm walking, I'm walking this morning, y'all, I'm walking, amen, I'm, I'm walking, amen, this morning. The Bible talks about in the book of Romans, amen, the fourth, uh, the sixth chapter, verse number four, amen, the Bible says that therefore we are uh, buried mm -hmm, with him by baptism. When you got baptized, you got buried, amen, you got buried in Christ. When, when you, this is one of the ordinances that Christ left with the church. Amen. And there were three that he left with the church. And this is one of the, uh, the ordinances that Christ left with the church was baptism. Amen. amen. Communion and feet washing was the other two. Amen. But amen. Dealing with the baptism here. The Bible says, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism. Uh, that like as Christ, amen, raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. It says, so we also should walk in the newness of life. He was resurrected by God. It was a new walk. Yep. We got to walk in that same walk. Amen. We got to walk in that same walk knowing, amen, that we're not sick. Uh, we got to walk in that same walk uh, uh, and, and declare that no, no, we're not broke. Uh, we got to walk that same walk, that new walk. My, my, my marriage is going to last. Amen. Uh, we got to walk in that new, the newness. We got to walk in the newness. Amen. The newness of this thing called life. The Bible talked about in the book of Daniel, uh, the praying prophet. Daniel, he, he turned to the east and prayed several times a day. When the sun rose, amen, when it would rise, he, he would turn to the sun and he would, amen, 
Amen. Acknowledge God and pray. My God, uh, 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 every day. Yes. He did everything he knew to do right, but he got wrong results. Yes. And then he had an entourage of people with him. Some Hebrew boys. Yeah, in the third chapter, my God, of Daniel, the third chapter, around verse 25, somewhere up through there, uh, the Bible talked about, amen, of uh, uh, Daniel, uh, uh, when, when, when the Hebrew boys, these three guys, they were put in the fire and furnace. Y'all know the story. Amen. But before they put them in there, they turned the heat up, amen, seven uh, times as heat, and those who threw him in were consumed uh, by, by this, this, this heat. But some kind of way, when Nebuchadnezzar came, amen, to them, uh, the, the, the captains and that the guys that, uh, that was overseeing everything, uh, he said, then y'all throw uh, uh, three men in the fire. He said, yeah, but there's another one in there, a four in there. And they said, they're walking around, y'all need to reach out by and, and they're not even hurt. They're not scorched by the fire. They still got all their beard, all their hair, nothing burnt. You don't even smell no smoke in their clothes. And they're walking around, you know, they was walking in faith. They were in the fire, but they were walking around in faith. My God, and the white, my goodness, God, uh, uh, the Bible said when they looked in there, they said one of them looked like the son of God. He don't look like the other three. But see, when you walk, my God, in faith, you walk through hot part places in life. You walk through the heat of life. Uh, when you're walking in faith, you find yourself walking, my God, in places that are, that are off limits to you that you don't have the authority or the power to do. Walking in faith. You're walking in faith, you're pleasing God. When you're pleasing God, God going to show up and he's going to show out and he's going to do it. Amen. What you're praying and asking him for. God looking for somebody to bless. But he's looking for somebody that's going to walk in faith. In other words, he's looking for somebody that's going to walk in him. Walking in faith. It was walking in fire, but they were walking in faith. Amen. And then Daniel, Daniel himself, my God, he was put in the lion's den. The Bible said that God gave the, uh, the lion's lock jaw. They, they, in, they in the habitat of lions. They, these creatures, my God, eat about 70 pounds of meat every day. Every day. Yeah, every day. They're nocturnal. Amen. In other words, they can uh, just, just wake up out of their sleep, amen, and, and, and attack and kill. Uh, They're they the king uh, of the forest. But there are some things that the, the lion don't have. He's not the biggest animal in, in, in see y'all, see, he, the, the, the elephant a little bit bigger. But God strategically made him the way he made him. Just like he made you the way he made you. So Daniel, my God, he's in this lion den. And he, he went and got comfortable and, and got the mane of one of the lions and propped it up under his head and, and was in there sleeping. Why? Because he was walking in faith. He was walking in faith. When you walk in faith, you can do stuff that others can't do. You can accomplish what others, amen, don't have the, uh, the natural ability to do. Walking in faith. Walking in faith. When, you, when you're walking in faith, amen, sometimes you'll lose your spiritual balance. Yeah, you walk in faith, but you'll lose your spiritual balance sometimes. And then in walking in faith, amen, you, you understand something uh, that you will uh, sometimes trip. Y'all know, uh, we, 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 we cool and stuff. You know, we, we trip and act like ain't nothing happening. And, uh, you know, sometimes you'll trip, uh, uh, but, you know, when you're walking in faith, you, you're not going to fall. But if you fall, the Bible says that the just man fall seven times, and, and then he rise up again. <laughs> See, there are some advantages that we have when we're walking in this thing called faith. We have some advantages when we're walking in faith. When you're walking in faith, you can do what others say you can't do. Mm -hmm. I'll say it again. People say you can't do this, you can't do that. Walk in faith, yes, you can. Apostle Paul said in Philippians 4, 13, he said, I can do all things through Christ. Amen, which strengthens me. So no matter what people say, you can't do it, what you can't accomplish. Keep, keep, start walking in faith and keep walking in faith and watch what happens. Watch what happens. Amen. When you're walking in faith, you'll become more than a conqueror. 
amen, you will conquer your own, amen, everything around you will conquer everything around you. You will, amen, take control and ownership of things that are around you, amen, when you're walking in faith. When you're walking in faith, amen, there is no weapon that is formed against you uh, that will prosper any time that rise against you. You want to convince. When you walk, my God, in faith, all things are going to work together for your good and then to them your cause according to God's purpose. So, amen, there's a greatness in you, my God, when you walk in by faith. Because the Bible said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So I believe that we need to start walking in faith and forgetting about the things that we, we, we doubt and felt like we couldn't do. Walking in faith. Walking in faith. Yeah, you're going to experience some trouble. But you won't be distressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be perplexed. But you won't be despair. Yeah, it ain't going to always be easy. You're going to go through some stuff. And when you're walking in faith, amen, you'll be persecuted, but you won't be forsaken. God ain't gonna never leave you destitute. My God, you 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 you, you gonna go through some things. Folk gonna laugh at you, but you gonna get the last laugh. Uh -huh. When you walking in faith, when you walking in faith, when you walking in the thing that pleased God, it changed the whole narrative. My God, of your life. When you walking by faith, when you walking in faith, when you walking in this thing, my God, you don't go out the perimeter of the, the of faith itself. When you don't cross the boundaries, my God, of what God have you at in terms of your faith, because you all have some faith. All of us have some faith. You may think your faith greater than mine. I may feel like mine's greater than yours, but faith is faith. Amen. Is faith. Is faith. Is faith. Is faith. faith you have in volume or amount. Faith is faith. And that's all God looking for. God is not looking for a man, uh, 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 a beautiful woman. God, God is not looking for a handsome man. Yeah, God is not looking for somebody rich or someone poor. God is not looking for people that's 100% uh, tithers in the church. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm not saying don't y'all stop y'all matter of fact let me stop right there uh, y'all need to tithe y'all need to bring 10% amen into the house of God amen so that it may be meat and provision amen for God's house amen honor him with the first fruit of your substance that's another lesson amen but God is not looking amen for what we think he's looking for but what he's looking for is faith in the individual that's what God is looking for. He's looking for faith inside of us. Let's go to the text. Can, can, I, can I walk through this? Just I'm walking this morning. I'm going to do a little exegesis on the scriptures. I'm just going to kind of dissect this just a little bit. Amen. As we walk through this passage on this morning. Amen. And I pray that God will stimulate that he would increase. Amen, your faith. Amen. Give you a faith increase Amen. on this morning. Look at the text here. Let me, before I read, amen, let's, let's back up just a little bit. Um, Jesus had just uh, took a couple fishes and a, a few loaves of bread, a couple loaves of bread, and fed multitudes of people. So the multitude, amen, you feed folk, they're going to follow you. They had fish, amen, and they had bread, but uh, there was no dessert. Uh, I'm messing with my wife this morning. There wasn't no dessert. Amen. They didn't get sweet, amen, after they had eaten, amen, the bread, amen, and, and the fish. They, amen, they was looking for some type of uh, something to drink. The Bible didn't make mention. Uh, they may have been a little thirsty after they had experienced this miracle that they missed because sometimes uh, we a little greedy. We want more, amen, than what God has already given us. And, and we're not content, my God, with what God has given us. The Bible said godliness with contentment is great gain. And so therefore, we got to learn how to be content or satisfied with what God has blessed us with. So Christ had took the fish, five loaves of bread, and fed these people. And they followed him. They followed him. 
So look, it picks up here in the text when they were following him. Uh, the Bible said that Jesus straightway, he constrained his disciples. He compelled them. He said, hey, y'all, I want y'all to go into that boat. See that big old ship? He said, go get on that ship right there. And he said, I want y'all to go before me. He said, go before him until the other side while he sent the multitudes away. So he told the disciples, he said, I want y'all to go get on the ship. I don't want y'all to just sit there, but I want y'all to go way out on the other side. He had a plan. God has a plan for your life. Some stuff don't make no sense that he directed us in. But he told the disciples, he said, y'all get on the ship, and I want y'all to go on the other side. Go all the way on the other side. And then the followers, the multitude, he said, look, y'all need to go y'all way. I don't have anything else for you all. I bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. But uh, we're, we're done. Amen. You, I, I can't do nothing. So he sent them away. Verse number 23. The Bible said that when he had sent the multitude away, look what Jesus did. He went up into a mountain. I like the word there. It says apart. He got away from everybody. And he went up on the mountain, you all, to pray. It is very important that we have a prayer lifestyle. When you pray, God speaks to you. The Bible said that we, amen, Matthew 26 and 41, it says, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. It says that the spirit is willing, but the flesh, amen, is weak. Uh, the Bible said that men are always pray and, and not faint. The scripture says that the effectual fervent prayer, James 5, amen, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. So it's important, amen, that we pray. Jesus understood this principle. So the Bible said after he had did what he did, he went apart, away from everybody, up on the mountain to pray. And he stayed up there for a while because the Bible said the evening came, started getting dark. Meanwhile, remember that the disciples out on the water. The Bible said the evening time was come, and, and, and then, or there, he was all by himself. Yeah. Sometimes you need to be solitary when yeah. you're dealing with God. You need to go uh, be by yourself. Yeah. And that's what Jesus did. The Bible didn't make mention of what he had prayed for. But the Bible did say that he had prayed for Peter one time. Yeah, yeah he prayed for Peter. And I believe that, amen, see, Christ, he interceded on our behalf through the Holy Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hey, a lot of times, a lot of us don't even understand that Jesus sits on the right hand of God, but he prays for us. Yes. He yes. sits as an intercessor, yes. amen, for us, and he prays for us. Yes. He said a prayer for us. Yes. So the Bible said that he went to pray. I don't know what he prayed about. The Bible don't make mention of what he prayed about, but he prayed to a place where he was all by himself. Yes. Verse 24 said that the ship was now in the midst of the sea. He was in the middle of the sea. And at this time, a, a storm came in. Yeah. And during the storm, the scripture said that um, the, uh, they was in the middle of the sea and they were tossed with waves. And they said, for the wind was contrary. The wind was going all kinds of directions. The wind was hitting from the north, the east, the south, and the west. The northeast, the north, south, uh, the south, well, it was just coming from every area. And it had got so strong when the waves began to beat up against the boat. I don't know if you all have been on cruises or been on a boat before. Amen. On, on the cruise I was on, I went out at night because I wanted to see what it looked like. Amen. And so I'm out there, and the boat is lit up real nice. But And when I looked out into the, into the sea, I couldn't see nothing. Everything was dark. There's no light out there. I want y'all to remember that. Lock that in your in, in your cabinet, in, 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 in the recesses of your mind right there. Remember that you can't see nothing in the dark. Amen. When you're on a boat, you look out, you can't see nothing. You can't see nothing. Ain't nothing out there but darkness. Nothing out there but darkness. But verse 24, the Bible said that they was out in this boat in the middle of the sea, and they was tossed with winds, amen, contrary winds, and the wave was hitting against the boat. 25, and they said, in the fourth watch, it's real dark now, y'all. Uh, probably about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. It's dark, pitch black outside, no, no light, no light in the fourth watch of the night. It says, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. It's dark out there, but Jesus is out there walking. He walking on the sea. He, he, they, they didn't have no flashlights and stuff, but, you know, Jesus, the Bible said he was walking on the sea, and he was distant 
from them. He wasn't right next to the boat. He was out a little ways. And yeah. he, was, he was walking, amen. Uh, he was walking on the sea. He was walking, you all, on faith because he had defied gravity. See, you, 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 can't, you can't just go out and do this. Type. See, prayer, amen, will cause you to land it. It will cause you to raise over things. My God, and you do things that you don't have the natural ability to do. See, Jesus spent some time in prayer, and he had a real truth relationship with God, although he said, I and the Father are one, he knew that he was the same as God in nature, but yet submissive in his duty. He knew that he was 100% God, but yet 100% man. So in his godness, he walked on the water. He walked, he walked on the water. And the Bible said that while he was walking in the water, it said in the, in the disciples, they saw him on the sea. Yes. How did they see him out there? It's dark. <laughs> when the light shows up, it removes the power of darkness. See, see Jesus is the light, amen, of this world. He don't need a flashlight. He don't need, my God, somebody to hit a switch and then he will, you know, illuminate. But amen to God, he, he's the light of this world. So they was able to see him, but, but what they saw was the light of God, my God, in the person of Jesus Christ. Yes. 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 He out there walking on the water. He out there walking. Come on, Mr. Jay, he out there walking. He out there walking on the water. Hey, y'all, you see, he ain't saying nothing yet. See, he had already prayed and prepared, my God, for what had was about to happen. See, God already know your next. God already know what's about to happen in your life. God already know the blessing that he has already bestowed upon you that have not manifest yet. So they're sitting back on the ship, on this big boat. They're looking out. And the Bible says they saw Jesus walking on the sea. But the scripture said they were troubled. They, they were doubtful. They began to become questionable. Because they was troubled. They were vexed in their spirit. And they, 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 they were a little troubled here at, at, at this time. And so they had something to say. They said, hey, that, 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 it, it's a spirit out there. They was right about that, the Holy Spirit. And that wasn't Casper. Amen. It, amen. It, is, it is a spirit. They say it's a spirit out there. It is a spirit. <laughs> and they cried out with fear. So they were troubled and they were fearful. I wonder what's our operativeness in regards to to things that happen around us that we're not familiar with. Do we doubt that God is able to do? Do we, we fear, amen, that God uh, will not save or deliver us from what we're dealing with? Amen. Many of us have been through some, some, some tragic things in our lives, some, amen, serious things in our life. And, uh, some folk have been through divorce and, uh, my, and, and my God, and, and have been through, amen, foreclosures and bankruptcies and, my God, the stuff that they, they, they weren't familiar with, didn't know, my God, what was going to happen next. But now they are uh, five, ten years up the road, my God, and, and you don't even look back on that stuff. Yes, because God don't see your... Yo, now he see your future. Yeah. He see where you're going. Yeah. We need to open up our spiritual eyes and begin to walk in faith yeah. and, 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 and become uh, aligned with what God has for us and move forward in regards to those things. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Jesus walking in the dark. The disciples seen him. Hey, it's a spirit. And they were full, they were fearful. They were afraid. They were scared. They were scared. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that after they had experienced that ordeal, it says that, amen, verse 27, it said, but straightway, right away, Jesus saw them scared and troubled. He spake unto them, saying, he said, hey, be of good cheer. He says, it 
is I. So I'm like God, the great I am. He said, I am. He said, he said I, it's I. Don't be, he, he said, be a good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. It's hard to not be scared when something scares you. Can we be real? Can I be transparent on this morning? Amen. And, and, and a lot of times we are asked to do what we feel like we cannot do. But when you're walking in faith, you can. Peter will prove it here in the text. He said, don't be afraid. Don't be troubled. Don't be fearful. Don't be fearful. And then Peter, the rest of them sitting around, they shaking. You can hear their knees and stuff knocking together. <laughs> they breathing hard and stuff. You know, you get, you get a little fear on you. The Bible said that, amen, uh, uh, Peter, he, he answered Jesus and he said, hey, Lord. He knew who he was then. He wasn't no spirit no more. In the spirit, he thought. He said, "If it be thou," right. he said, "Jesus, if that's you out there, mm -hmm. <laughs> if, it, if it be thou," he said, "Bid me to come to thee." He said, "Can I come out there with you?" If that's you, though, so he's still doubting. He said, "If it be you, bid me to come." Can I come, Jesus? He said, hey, Peter, verse 29, he said, come. He said, come. But look at Peter's response, you all. Peter has something that the other 11 didn't have. And I want to say this morning, I'd rather be out in the water with Jesus than to be scared sitting on the boat. I'd rather be with Jesus. Amen boisterous winds blowing than to be scared sitting on a boat. Because fear is not going to please God. It's your faith. So the Bible said that Peter, he said, Jesus said, he said, come. He said, come on out here, Peter. And Peter, he, he, the Bible said when, when Peter was come down, he, he right away. Immediately, Peter came down out of the ship, verse number 29, and look what he did. Peter walked on the water. You've never read the Bible. Anybody else did something like did did this before? No. Mm -mm. He he walked on the water because he he got out the boat. Y'all gotta see this. I don't know if y'all ever been on a boat before. It, it's a little drop down to the water before you get to the water uh, because it was on a ship. It was on a ship. So some kind of way, Peter got down over the border, uh, over the the, the the ship, and he got down in the water. I don't know if he hung on the sides here before he dropped. Uh, but Peter got down in the water. When he hit the water, he had enough faith to believe that he was able to do what he was he could do. So Peter walked on that water. He was walking on the water. But my Sunday matter this morning: keep walking in faith. Keep walking. Don't, don't lose your balance. Don't, don't lose, amen. Don't let things distract you, amen, to cause you not to be able to walk, my God, in this thing called faith, because that's the thing that's going to please God. That's going to bring pleasure to God. But Peter got on the boat. He got on the boat. He's down on the boat. Jesus said, come. He got on the boat, came down. He started walking on the water, and the Bible said he went to go to Jesus. So in other words, this is a process. He didn't just sink right away. He out there He's like, wait a minute. I'm walking the water. What's, what's going on here now? I'm, got, I'm out here. I don't, you know, way past where I, my, my mentally uh, mind have, have taken me. And uh, I'm, I'm walking the water. I see my leader doing it. So, amen, if he can do it, I believe that I can do it too. Amen to God. I'm going to say again, if I see my leader, my God walking, amen, well, I believe that I'm going to be able to do it too. Amen. My God, they cannot do what God have, have anointed them to do. And if he anointed them to do it, you need to consume, join yourself with them and walk with them. Walk with them. Peter, he believed his leader. And as a result, he defied gravity as well. That's what he said that he began to walk on the water. And he going to Jesus. I don't know what was on his mind. The Bible didn't say but prior to that, he was troubled and he was fearful. But some kind of way, something, amen, it, it eradicated that or removed, removed that from him. And he
and he was able to walk on them. Yeah. Amen. They began to walk with Jesus. There, there was a story, amen, uh, I read uh, about, a, about a year, a couple of years ago, as a guy down in Africa, and he had a large following of people. And he said, I'm going to do, I have faith, you all, to do what Jesus did. He said, I'm going to have faith. I got faith to walk on the water. See, Jesus went and prayed. Jesus spent a whole lot of time with God. And sometimes we move in, in, in foolish things. Sometimes we have faith in things that we should not have faith in. Y'all ain't going to hear anybody tell y'all that. But I, I got to be real with you this morning. So this guy in Africa, he, he, he began to walk toward the water. And his, his people standing back watching him. He said, I'm going to walk on the water. So he went out there and he walked in, he walked in, in the water and was going over his ankles. That was a sign right there to let you know. <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe you, 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 you're doing the wrong thing. Your, your faith is not uh, where, you, where it should be in, in God. So uh, 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 for James, he, he walking in it, at his ankles, at his knees and stuff. So amen to God, he, he said uh, he had faith to believe God sometimes. Amen. You have faith in things, but if it's not happening, that thing might not be for you. Uh, so he kept walking, amen, and, and, and as he walked on, they say he disappeared and they still ain't found him. <laughs> because he had foolish faith. The Bible says he didn't walk with, with the wise. Mm -hmm. A wise. That was foolish. But the Bible said that Peter, he walked on this water and when he, he walked on the water, he was going to Jesus and, and something happened in verse number 28, uh, verse number 29, just told me upon verse 30. Uh, what happened here, Peter said in verse number 30, he said that when, when, when Peter saw the boisterous wind. Yeah. See, didn't the Bible say that we walk by faith and not by sight? see if he would have applied that principle to his life I think he would have walked to Jesus and they would have walked back to the boat together but they saw he saw these boisterous winds these strong winds blowing uh, we all have been in a storm before and the wind you know it gets your attention and stuff and you know you you know, you walk and all of a sudden, you you know, you jerk with the wind and the, the wind kind of strong. And he's dealing with that walking on this water and, uh, you know, his balance is not looking real good. He's trying to, uh, to get to Christ in uh, some kind of way. He saw this wind. I don't know how you're going to see the wind because I don't know what it looked like. But uh, the scripture said that he saw, amen, this, this boisterous wind. And, and then it said, here it is, he was afraid. So afraid that he began to sink. He began to sink. His faith started going down, down the drain. Bible say he began to sink. He began to sink, but he had sense enough to call on the name of the Lord. The Bible said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. It says that the righteous pray and they are safe. Amen. So he, he, he had enough sense you know, uh, to do the right thing. See, sometimes we're in trouble. We're just going down. Uh, but Peter said, wait a minute. I, I ain't going to go out like this uh, because I know what Jesus can do. I, I have a track record with him. Uh, I know that he healed my mother-in-law. I know in Acts 12, they, they was in prayer and I was released from prison. I seen I had an experience uh, with God. So therefore, I, I better call on his name. I said he called out to Jesus. He called out, he called out, he cried out, you all. He just called. See, there's a difference between the call and the cry. And he was calling with tears. And he was calling, my God, uh, with an urgency. I need you uh, right now. I need you. To, I ain't got time for you to uh, tell me what the Bible says right now. I don't need you, my God, to tell me about a story of I need you to save me right now. Hosanna! <laughs> save me right now. So he cried out. He cried out. He cried out to Jesus. He 
You say, Lord, save me. Don't be so saved where you don't where you feel like you don't need to repent. Apostles and prophets and evangelists, pastors and teachers need a revival. Amen. Amen. We should never come to a place where we feel like we're so secure in God where we won't cry out for salvation. Bible said that he cried out. He said, Lord, save, save me. And then he experienced immediate gratification. The Bible says in verse number 31, it says, immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him. He didn't let him go under. Hey, you all, I don't know how far he was from Christ. But some kind of way, Christ's arm was long enough to reach him. And it don't matter how far you are from God. Sometimes you can be out of God's will or in the place of that place. But God is a compassionate God and he will love us. And he's going to save you. But he ain't going to let you go down and join him. I will say that Jesus reached out and caught him. He didn't go under. He caught him, and he brought him to surface. But he had something to say to him. He said, Peter, he didn't say, man, you ain't got no faith. But what he did say, he said, oh, thou of little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? How in the world did you let this doubt? been over for 38 years and, and loosed her from her infirmity. You saw me, my God, uh, uh, take a couple fish and, and five loaves and feed a multitude of people. You saw me, my God, do uh, you saw me down in Bethany when I when I raised Lazarus from the dead and, and you was with me, my God, when we went uh, to Jairus' house and raised his uh, 12 year old daughter uh, from the where is it? That, what, what, how did you uh, come to a place where you allowed this doubt? Show up in your heart. How did you allow that to happen? I can see Peter standing there like a little kid. You know how he is a kid. You know, walking side to side, kind of trying to ignore the facts of what has actually happened. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Peter, if he would have responded, I think the only thing he could have said is that, well, Jesus, I, 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 I some kind of way, I, I stopped walking in faith. That's why I doubt it, because I, I, I stopped walking in faith. That's what God is saying to us this morning. That's what he said. He said, keep walking in faith. transgressions and sins and we ain't even asked him to do it. 
God is gathering his people. He's gathering us. He's bringing us to a place for his second return. Hey, it's not the will of God that any of us perish, but that we all come to repentance. We come to repentance. So we have to keep walking. We have to keep walking. We have to keep walking. Amen. In faith. Amen. Got to keep walking in faith. The Bible says that faith without works is dead being alone. So if you're going to walk in faith, faith must inspire action. Yes, sir. It must inspire action. Because dead faith is like not even having any faith at all. When I say that anything that's dead needs to be buried. So we have to come to a place where we have that type of faith in God and let nothing deter us from him and from his word. When we walk in faith, faith produces us with the ability to resist the devil and humbly submit ourselves to God. When we walk in faith, I'm going to say it again. When you walk in faith, it, it, it actually it, it, it gives you the ability to resist the devil and then humbly walk unto God and submit ourselves to God. So as we walk in faith, when we walk in faith and we continue to walk in faith, you, your faith will supersede all your thoughts. It will supersede all of your actions. It will supersede all of your abilities. As Paul said, we walk by faith and not by sight. So we must understand you all, just about done this morning, that faith is, it can be defined by so, so in so many ways, but uh, here's a way that I like to define faith to bring people to a clear understanding of, 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 of the definition, as to say, of faith. So we must understand that faith is a vivid picture created or developed in the imagination of the mind. Can you hear? It's a vivid picture that's created or developed in the imagination of the mind with a supernatural substance of certainty. But you have to believe. So if you're going to create anything in your mind and allow yourself to be in the will of God, you have to have what's going to call faith. And you have to continue to walk in it. All of the winds of life are blowing. All of the storms of life are rising. You still have to continue to walk in faith. Even when you pray and God don't hear your prayers. When I saw you this, this, this today, God said, I'm here, I'm hearing what you're asking. I hear, I hear what you're asking me. He believes in me. It's, it's not time yet. It's not time. I am conditioning the thing. Because I'll do it right now. It's not going to go the way that it's supposed to go. God, God, hear what you're praying. Hear what you're praying about. But we have to pray. We have to pray. And we have to have faith. And continue to have faith in God. And let the supernatural substance of certainty become a reality. Hey, you all, check this out. And I'm going to stop here. We think too much. think too much. I, I kind of hate that about myself because I like to be in the light of things. I don't like being confused about nothing. I don't like, amen, to God when I'm uh, at a place where, you know, uh, maybe or I need to know. That, that's one, one, of, one of my strategies or even, even to say some of, one of the things that I deal with in my life, amen, that I need to work on. I try to outthink things. I think things out too, out too heavy thinking. I'm too of a heavy thinker. 
Overthinking. Yeah. Yes. But sometimes we think too much. And what we need to do is just trust God. Here it is, and have complete faith in him. Peter didn't have complete faith. That's why he went under. Peter didn't have complete faith. That's why he was cussing folk out in the scripture. He didn't have that complete faith in God. He liked going out naked and stuff, doing stuff. He, uh, Peter, you know, he, uh, uh, he has some issues.
grace from you, oh God. And we thank you that it is so. Father, touch every heart, Lord, every man, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, that you would release the spirit of faith in this house, in the leaders of this house. I lift the leaders up of this house today. I bind the powers that be. I bind the hand of the enemy that comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. I rebuke the devourer of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, I bind every demonic force, oh God. I pray against every spiritual wickedness, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I raise up a people, a leader, some leaders, Father, in this place that will have faith in you and even those who are of the house. Lord, I pray that you would endow them, oh God, with the faith of God, you will release wisdom in the hearts of the believers. In Jesus' name, we lift up the vision the head. 
made is the mouthpiece, the voice of God. So y'all keep your meter above water. to visually see the attacks of the enemy and divinely intervene on your behalf and pray for you. As long as your head is above water. Let's cover, let's cover our bishop. That's my bishop too. Yeah, yeah. Amen. That's my bishop too. Amen. I don't know how y'all feel, but I love him. I love his wife. And ain't no distortion in regards to my love toward him. I know that he is my biological brother, but if he wasn't, I would still love him the more. Amen. So let's let's come saturate him. Amen. In prayer. Keep him covered. He covered you. Because you're covered and he covers you. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. So y'all have y'all cover him. Y'all cover him. Keep him covered. Amen. Keep him covered. And y'all remember this. Keep him above more. Your hands together. God is good. All that He does is good. Play that for me, Clarence. Amen. There's a spirit of worship in this place right now. Amen. I, I truly believe when the word of God goes forth, you need to offer something to show your gratitude. How many of you got a worship in you right now?
third of them will not do inside of my spirit. I like that repetition, that repetition stuff like that, y'all. Because it just simply tells you what I feel in my heart. And I believe that you are the people, you the people of God are blessed. You the people of God are blessed. Because God is a God of progression. But sometimes He spontaneously moves you. 